Scotland will be desperately disappointed, but they're going to have to rid themselves of that idea immediately because they've got a championship that they can still go and win in Ireland this coming weekend. Hello, amateurs. and Welcome back to our Six Nations series. I'm going to be with you all the way through to the end of the championship and beyond. So make sure you hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. And today I'm going to be looking at Scotland. And in particular, what I think the Scotland team is going to be to face Ireland this coming weekend. And as I said, they had the huge, huge high of beating England for the Calcutta Cup. They couldn't then get to those heights again and lost in Italy. Must be crushingly disappointed. But like I said, sport comes and goes. Wins come and go. There's still a championship for them to go and claim if they can get a huge performance out of themselves in Dublin. And that has to be their focus this coming weekend. So how did they go against Italy? Well, oh my word, they played fast and loose for long periods of this time for this match. And it worked. It worked in spades. It seemed like every time they went into contact, they tried to offload. And if it didn't go to hand, then it bounced to another Scottish player and they kept surging forward, finding space and gaining ground and scoring tries. And for a long time, I thought they might run away with this game. But Italy came back and, and battled in and got scores themselves. Elko and myself went into this one in great detail. I'll link it up there for you. Go and check that match review out if you haven't seen it already. There's a load of great detail in this one. Okay, squad updates for Scotland. Uh, recording this on the Sunday evening. And as far this as far, I have not heard any squad news, but I'm assuming White will come back in after his uh, voluntary rest this past weekend. So I expect him to be available for selection uh, going forwards. Although George Horn had a cracking game himself, didn't he? OK, so let's get into the selection here and take a look at the forwards. And you get to this stage of the tournament and you know who your best players are. You know who your best combinations are. Then it's going to be a case of, are these guys fresh? Do some of them need a little bit of a rest where they benefit from starting from the bench? Is there somebody that's been on the bench who's absolutely ramping to go and deserves a start? These are the questions that Gregor Townsend will be asking because they're going to have a huge physical battle on their hands this weekend in Ireland. Uh, all these guys, I think, played well. Darge in particular, I'm going to pick out. I thought was outstanding at open side for Scotland. And then Ferguson and Turner, I think, are both having really strong championships. Ferguson with a try and a try for the loose head Schumann as well this weekend, just gone. The blank there is number six, Andy Christie, who in Italy, I thought, had a really industrious game. Played well, got his hands on the ball, played lots of breaks, all that kind of stuff. And the game suited him. In Ireland this weekend, do Scotland want to go for a heavy Heavier, more gritty, more bullocking kind of a six. I think they do. I think Ferguson starts this weekend for those reasons. And then potentially if the game is looser and there's more space later on, Andy Christie can come in and have a positive difference then. Moving into the backs. And again, the best players are still the best players. Uh, George Horn played well. At nine, really, really zippy, accurate with his service in a very fast game as well. But Ben White has been brilliant this championship and was only left out to have a rest. So there's a question mark there whether they'll bring him back in. Uh, Russell van der Merwe was had a couple of dodgy moments at the weekend, actually. I thought he could have taken on Capuazzo potentially when the game was still in the balance. And uh, I think he just got confused by the running line of Ali Price inside him. Uh, Lots of other decent performances there in the backs, though. Hugh Jones scything through a few times. Question mark at 12. I thought Redpath did well. Had a good, solid game. Carried pretty well, actually. He's, he's kind of bigger and heavier than you really uh, give him credit for, I think, or maybe I give him credit for anyway. But there is a question mark again against this Ireland team who are powerful, powerful through the middle with Aki and with Henshaw. Do you go with Stefan McDowell? to really try and combat that threat, try and match bulk with bulk. Don't know. Big question mark, really. Uh, possible, but it'd be very hard on Redpath, I think, who played well. He had a good game. I think I think you go with White. If you're resting the guy, then you know he's your number one and you have to bring him back in no matter what the other player did. 
in his play in his place. And with Redpath again, I think you go with consistency here. Play together a lot with Russell, and I think they combined well for the vast majority of the time at the weekend. So get that settled side out there, give them the opportunity to go and create some more tries for for the flashing Kinghorn and Van der Merwe out wide. And Carl Stein as well, of course, who also scored against Italy. Onto the bench, and Hepburn struggled a little bit in the scrum, actually, after he came on at the weekend, gave a penalty away. Skinner, I thought, had one of his better games for Scotland in the second row. And then you've got Richie and Christie, absolute, well, one absolute carrying menace in Andy Christie and one breakdown menace in uh, in Richie. So. I think Scotland will go 6-2. Everybody reckons that they went 6-2 last week in preparation for this week. Uh, so we'll see. We'll absolutely see. And George Horn and Carl Rowe to provide some more zip from the bench. Now, what do we want to see from this Scotland team? It's unlikely they're going to get as much possession as they did in Italy. Ireland are going to come and try and dominate this game physically. They're going to try and dominate possession, I'm sure. So Scotland will have to defend for long periods and they're going to have to be really patient on that defence as well because Ireland are so efficient. So I think we're going to have to see Scotland defend like demons with huge discipline and then show the attacking uh, minutiae, the attacking absolute ruthlessness that they showed against England. This game can be won. It's a long shot, but then England against Ireland was a long shot as well. It could happen. But what do you think at home? Is this a team that you think Gregor Townsend is going to send to Dublin to try and win the Six Nations Championship? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll join you there for a conversation. Give this video a thumbs up if you don't mind while you're down there. Helps other people find it. And you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And don't forget to get out and play.